Wow, they got Thurston Waffles? May he rest in peace. Also, uh, shout out to the great Pat Stay and his family as well, somebody I've enjoyed for many, many years. Welcome to Open Mic. We like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spill the tea in D.C., so you know these jokes come from a place of love. Let's start things off right here in D.C., where former President Barack Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama had their White House portraits unveiled. Now, uh, Barack's painting was by Robert McCurdy. There you see it right there, looking quite gangster. It kind of reminds me of the poster for Scarface, which is in the official registry of must-see black cinema, even though there's, there's no black people in it. It's kind of weird. Uh, Jet Li's work is all in it as well. Barack, of course, repping for the culture. Michelle's portrait by Sharon Sprung definitely captures the kind of grace that she evoked as First Lady. Barack, by the way, heaped the ultimate praise on the portrait. I want to thank Sharon Sprung for capturing everything I love about Michelle. Her grace, her intelligence, and the fact that she's fine. <laughs> and the fact that she's fine. Presidential brownie points indeed. Michelle stressed the importance of representation in her speech. So for me, this day is not just about what has happened. Uh, it's also about what could happen. Because a girl like me, she was never supposed to be up there next to Jacqueline Kenny, Kennedy and Dolly Madison. Uh, she was never supposed to live in this house, and she definitely wasn't supposed to serve as first lady. Love you, <laughs> See, this is what makes me mad. See, because somebody forgot it was a formal event and just yelled out, we love you, Michelle. But then they get rewarded for it. You know what I mean? Like when I yell out at a random formal event, I get escorted out. Life's not fair. Life's not fair. Let's stay in D.C. for this next story, where the Washington Nationals are reportedly sending a surprise gift to a 10-year-old softball player, Avery Hilliard from Virginia, after she had a baseball snatched away from her by a grown man at a game last Thursday, according to her mom, Regina. She said Nats outfielder Joey Manessis then threw the ball Avery's way. All of a sudden, and just out of nowhere, a man runs up next to Avery. You see the gentleman get up from his seat really quick as soon as he saw the ball being tossed and just stuck his glove in front of her glove. The man then grabs the ball while another girl yells. <laughs> Hilliard said the man claimed he bought a ticket, so he had as much right to the ball as anyone else. Wow, come on, bruh. Really? Who does this to a 10-year-old? This guy needs a red flag floating over his head at all times. He is a menace in an outdated jersey. I hope somebody takes his girlfriend right in front of him and pays it forward. That is assuming that someone like this even has a girlfriend. The Nationals haven't said what they're sending to Avery, but I hope it's great. These girls are already state champions. Meanwhile, this guy is going down in history as the worst Nats fan ever. He's our Steve Bartman. Those thoughts from our writers. Me, on the other hand, what? So my man bought a ticket, he can't catch the ball? There is a excellent Michael Jordan meme that expresses my feelings perfectly. I chose this next story out of Baltimore because it was too funny to ignore. A Twitter user named Mook posted, I'm moving out of Baltimore. I just got chased by a pit bull with a new port in his mouth. I'm done. That's it. The tweet was accompanied by this picture, which shows a pit bull with a cigarette in his mouth. A pit bull with a new port. That's on brand for Baltimore. Now, I don't know how true this is, but it is hilarious, so I had to share it. If it turns out to be Photoshop, I won't even be mad. In fact, actually probably would be good for the dog since... Smoking Newports is not healthy for them either. The way that that pit bull is looking at Mook and his camera, though, I believe that this chase happened. I just, I choose to believe it. I've spent time in Baltimore. I choose to believe it. That dog has the same look as my favorite meme, the Samuel Jackson death stare. Mook, I am glad you lived to tell the tale. The only way the pit bull could be scarier is if the cigarette was tucked behind its ear. Anyone who uses their ear as a cigarette holder is clearly about that life and by the way while we're on the topic that Michael Jordan meme works for this story too we're headed to South Dakota for this last story where a boy named Tariq who shot to fame thanks to a video of him sharing his love of corn on a, a web series called recess therapy was named South Dakota's official corn ambassador me 
I really like corn. What do you like about corn? Ever since I, um, I was told that corn was real, it tasted good. Wow. Felt the same way about 211. This couldn't have happened to a better kid. Who knew what the nation needed at this moment was a kid discussing his incredibly strong love of corn. South Dakota recognized this kid's greatness and jumped on it, inviting him to view their corn palace and bestowing, bestowing the title of corn ambassador on him. Tariq's recess therapy video is so popular, it was even remixed into a hit song, and he's even charging $220 to make a personalized video on Cameo, which is quite an accomplishment because I've been on Cameo for five years uh, and I'm still at 85 cents. Get your money, Tariq. Who said being corny isn't lucrative? Russell Wilson already proved that that's not true. We must protect that kid's innocence at all costs. What do you think my favorite story is, Chris? The corn. The corn? What, do you, what do you think, Aaliyah? The corn. The corn? Really? Really? Wow, it's like y'all don't know me at all. It's the pit bull with the Newport. I can't stop laughing at that photo. It's amazing.